The D3 data join, the point of it is to keep the DOM elements in sync with the data elements. So the data is what you pass into the dot data part. It's an array, a JavaScript array. And the DOM elements in the document object model are, I don't know, for example, SVG circles or SVG rects. Could be anything. And we can think about these as overlapping sets. So here's a circle that represents all the DOM elements. And here's another circle that represents all the data elements. Assuming we start with a selection, which is a D3 selection of the parent element of all the DOM elements that we're going to manipulate. And let's say we want to keep a bunch of circles in sync with our data. We start by saying selection.select all circle. That gives D3 the information of what the DOM elements are to start with. And the first time this runs, the set will be empty because there are no circles quite yet. Next, we say dot data. And let's say we pass in an array of like one, two, three. This part tells D3 what the data portion is. Now D3 has all the information it needs to do the dot join part. And the dot join part considers these three different cases. The first case is enter. This enter case happens when for a given data element there is no corresponding DOM element. And with dot join we could say circle but that's actually a shorthand. It's a shorthand for the more complex case of invoking dot join, which is where you pass in explicitly these three different cases, enter, update, and exit. Now, update and exit don't really trigger the first time this code runs. The update case happens when there are existing DOM elements corresponding to the data elements. And the exit case happens when the data array changes to have fewer elements, and then there are leftover DOM elements that need to be removed. Now, if we invoke dot join passing the string circle, that's actually shorthand for the following. The first argument of dot join is a function that takes as input the enter selection, and it should return a new selection containing newly appended elements. And in the case of circles, that looks like this, enter.append circle. This line will append a brand new circle element, in this case three times, corresponding to each of these elements of the data array. So that's the enter case. And then there's the update case. And if we, if we were to use the shorthand of passing circle here, this would just be a no op. It would do nothing and return the update selection. And then the exit case, this is the selection of all the leftover DOM elements that no longer have any corresponding data elements. So usually the thing to do is to just remove them from the DOM. And that looks like this. So that's the expanded syntax for dot join. It handles enter, update, and exit. Now it turns out that this dot join returns a selection. And that's why you can say dot attr something like, uh, I don't know, r gets to be 10. But what is that thing? Like, what is .attr acting on? It turns out that .join returns the merged enter and update selection. This means that 
if a circle is either newly appended or has existed before, then this gets applied to that selection. So that's the D3 data join in a nutshell. Let's look at some specific examples. Let's consider this case where this code over here runs for the first time. There's data elements, one, two, three, but there are no existing DOM elements. What will we have for enter, update, and exit? Since there are no existing DOM elements for any of these, all of these will be part of the enter selection. An update will be empty, an exit will be empty. That means that the first time this code here runs, it will just append three new circles. And the dot, dot join will return the merged enter and update selection, which in this case just has the three newly appended circle, and it will set the radius on all of those. Now let's consider the case that that same code already ran once, and it has created these three circles. In this case, there are circles that already correspond to those data elements. So what will we have for enter, update, and exit? Well, in this case, there are no cases here where there's a DOM element missing. So enter will be empty. Update will contain all three because for all three, there's an existing DOM element corresponding to the data element. Exit will also be empty. So when this code runs again, it'll trigger just the update selection. It'll return that selection containing the three circles that were returned by select all, and it will set the R attribute on all of those, again, to be the same thing, so it won't actually do anything. Let's consider another case where there are three DOM elements, but there are four data elements. This could happen if the data changes over time. In this case, what will we have for enter? Well, there are DOM elements corresponding to the data elements except for this one. So this element here four falls into this set where there is a data element and there is not a DOM element. Therefore, it'll end up in the enter selection. So enter here will be four and the update will be same as before, one, two, three, and exit will be empty. And by the way, this is what would happen if you call dot data with an array with one, two, three, four in this code here. So if it, if it were the same code running, but instead of one, two, three, it was one, two, three, four, that would trigger this case here. Now let's consider the case that this code runs, but instead of passing data one, two, three, we pass data of empty array. In this case, there are four existing circles, but no data elements. What will we have here for enter, update, and exit. We're only looking at the case where there are DOM elements, but no data elements. So the DOM elements exist, but the data elements don't. That triggers the exit case. So we're just going to end up with four circles in the exit selection, and those circles will be removed. But let me make these diagrams a little more precise because, you know, these D3 selections are DOM elements and data elements linked together. After we call enter.append circle, these are actually sort of joined together, the data elements and the DOM elements. And similarly, when they're updated, you know, the circles are associated with 
these elements here. And even in the exit case, these DOM elements still have these data elements associated to them. Even though the new data is empty, the existing DOM elements have these, these data elements sort of uh, attached to them. That's why you can still access the data in the exit selection, which we'll see when we start working with transitions. I hope you enjoyed this conceptual overview of D3 data joins.